Hello Flosstube, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another Flosstube episode. This is Flosstube number 80 and welcome back or welcome if you're brand new. I'm so glad you're here. This is my series here on YouTube where I talk about all things cross stitch, stitching, quilting, felt stitching, anything that has to do with a needle and thread. I'm here for it. So I hope you all have had a great week since I last chatted with you. We're probably going to have a kind of quick episode today. This is basically a quick recap of my week and a little talk about the Flossiversary seasonal Viscornu Sal that does start this coming Wednesday, the 17th of April. Um, I have a little bit of stitching to share with you. I have some giveaways to announce a tiny little bit of haul and some amazing, amazing happy mail. So uh, let's jump in to this week's episode. As always, I have timestamps in the description, so it makes it easy to uh, check exactly what you want to check, or if you need to come back at a later date, you want to look at an FFO or information about a sal, all of that good stuff, you can find that there. And I also... Um, put links to the things I'm talking about down below. So if you are um, curious and you want to go either purchase something or check something out, I put links down there for anything that I have a link to. Um, one note before we jump in and I share my book of days. I sent out my first email newsletter last Monday and a lot of people may have signed up after the email went out. I did post the link to that email in my Facebook group, so you can check it out there. And I know some people, that's how they read it. I am including a link to it down below as well. Um, I am going to be sending out an email newsletter every Sunday at some point on this on Sundays, kind of with a recap of the week, a recap of sows or other stitching things or things that I may have heard of that I want to share with you guys. So you can look for that every Sunday and definitely look for the this week's email going out um, this Sunday. Which Okay, let's talk about my book of days and then let's talk about some stitching. Okay, first up, I am going to share my book of days. No, I have filmed quite a bit of content. Have I got it edited? No, I just have not had time. So I am going to share my March all filled in and we'll take a look at how I did. If this is your first time seeing my book of days, I decorate mine with some washi stickers. I like washi because it's flat and it doesn't add bulk but you can have super fun with it. Like I created little scenes and whatnot. Sometimes I like it better than others. It's just a record of my stitching. The real thing is I just want to keep track of what I stitch and how often I stitch. So I have made a color key over here um, where I am just highlighting new starts are bright pink, finishes are orange, FFOs are yellow, sows are green which I have not done a good job keeping track of that. When we start our new sow, I will mark that down. Whips and restarts if I have them, which I thought I had a restart somewhere. I don't know that I, oh yeah, I did. Channing Street back in February. Really gotten back on that. Yes, that was a little sarcasm. Um, so, and then at the end of the month, I can go through and tally up how many new starts how many finishes and how many FFOs. So in March I had seven new starts, four finishes, and four FFOs. Pretty good. So I did finish decorating my April and I have it filled out. It I need to add the highlighter. I generally just write in every day what I've done and then I'll highlight it all at once. But it looks like I've had um, an FFO. That was my triple play spring that I Biscorn you I shared last week. Um, I had a finish the triple play winter and I have an FFO I just haven't highlighted it yet which you're going to get to see the, the winter Biscorn you. If this is your first time hearing about the seasonal Biscorn you sell that starts this week I am going to be stitching the summer basket from Hands On Design and I am going to be stitching it on 32 count during the sale. Um, which is the called for fabric, called for DMC, 
stitching one of the designs into a biscornu and then showing that entire process from start to finish and then there is a finishing tutorial. I'm also stitching the there's three designs in each chart. The other two designs I will be stitching one in 36 count and one in 40 to show you the difference in size. Also make a cute little stack of um, summer or patriotic biscornus but I did stitch one design from all of the other seasons because it's a choose your own season to stitch but I have chosen one from each and I've stitched a biscornu so that I would have a variety to show and today I'm going to show you the winter. I've already shown you spring and fall so that is super exciting and fun. Anyway um, I am loving this. It's very easy for me to keep up with. You can see I've got it all decorated and filled out. I've already decorated my May so I can just roll in to May. Um, I need to decorate June and July. August is already all decorated. <laughs> I guess I haven't put my wash. I like to put washi in between and I didn't do that yet. Um, I have a few left to do. I did November. I didn't do December. I'm loving it. There is something I want to do to add to this, but I'll let you guys know when I get to that. So that is my book of days update. This is working out fantastic for me. I didn't know if I would like the book of days or not, but I am a fan. Okay, so you probably saw in the thumbnail for this video, I have a little basket of sweet little seasonal biscornus. So I, when I announced the sal, I did have this one done. This is from the fall triple play uh, basket. And I had this one stitched. It is stitched on 32 count. Then I completely changed the colors of the spring one. And I used the colors from the spring folk uh, band sampler that just came out at market from Hands On Design. And I changed the colors so that I could set my Biscornu right next to that when I finish it. And I did a few little adjustments. I talked about that in last week's video, but that is where the DMC colors came from that. So you can totally change the colors for your Biscornus. You can change the colors for anything, but don't be afraid to, to do that. And that, I also changed the fabric. This is Driftwood by Fabrics by Stephanie, which is the same color from the spring folk chart. Then this is the new Biscornu. This is the winter and I actually started stitching this before I ever stitched this one, but I finished this one up and you can see I used one of the completely different charts for the bottom, but this is stitched on 36 count charcoal linen. And so it's a little bit smaller and I'm going to put the top down camera so you can see that. 40 is even going to be smaller yet. I did put a snowflake button in the center from just another button company. And then I had the little snowman and bird left over also from just another button company from something else. I think a tree came in this as well. And so I stuck those in. So looking at the Biscornus, I think this gives you a pretty good idea of the size difference. So here in my hand is the 32 count. This is 36. So it's a little bit smaller. And really, really cute. Um, if you wanted to, like if you took the pins out, Those are almost too close to the same size, so I probably would do more like this and then put the little one on top. But just kind of pick your favorite fabric. But that is kind of a snowflake design. I thought it was beautiful. What I love is this is winter, and so this is more, instead of holiday, you could definitely stitch it on something and maybe change the colors to make it more holiday-ish. But these are more seasonal. Um, not so much holiday. So my hope is to have this as part of my winter January decor, which is kind of lacking. And I'm excited to maybe tuck this with some other snowman pieces, um, just as a beautiful way to decorate for the winter season. So this is the chart it's from. Let me 
stick my pins back here in my fall. Let's talk about the winter biscornu. This is the chart it's from. You can get all of these charts from Hands On Design or your local needle workshop or online seller. This is the paper version of the chart, but uh, Kathy and Bill of Hands On Design have made all four of these charts available in PDF. So the sale is starting this Wednesday. I am always work at your own pace, do what you need to do. Um, if you can keep up, great. If you need to work, you know, if that the resource will be there for you. So the videos will be there. We're going to start the sale. I know a lot of you have started. That's fantastic. I am going to start on camera in the Wednesday Night Live. I'm going to show you how I figure out where I'm going to start, and I am going to start on camera. I'll stitch it on camera for you. Um, I'm going to show you how to stitch to how to do the back stitch line um, in the third week, I believe. That's when that's slated for. And then that fourth week, we're going to uh, finish it up with talk. Well, the third and fourth week are more back stitch line and what design to stitch for the back. So for that, I've shown in the other Biscorn news when I finished those and talked about them. I pick a design for the front. So I obviously picked this design up here to stitch front, the top, to stitch for the top. It's kind of a snowflake design. When you look down on it, I thought it would look beautiful. I love how it's nice and centered. This design is not necessarily centered. I think if you would, if you could envision stitching a portion of this and you're comfortable doing that, you could definitely shift it and make it more centered, or if you don't mind it being off-centered, that's okay too. This is beautiful, but there's a lot less stitching in it, and so I opted not to do that one. What I did do, this is obviously the top. The bottom piece of fabric has a cute little design in the corner that comes from this chart, and I used this corner right here. So let's hold those up. So you can see them, hopefully. Let's show the chart first. This corner where my thumb is. I only stitched that little corner and like those two little triangle lines and then the little back stitch. I did change the colors of a couple of th things or maybe just one thing, maybe just the back stitch line. But I only stitch enough to, I wanna mention this. Is that a little grease stain? Sure is. You want to know the dumb thing I did, you guys? I like to just be completely transparent. It's a good thing I have no plans to show the bottom of this or display it. I filled this with my walnut shells. We're having a timeout break for story time. And it was first thing in the morning. I had stitched it all up. I'd left a small opening. I was filling it whatever. And then I filled it and I kind of went like this on the counter, just smack. Cause I'd already, I'd stitched it shut, smashed it, you know, get my little divot for my, so I could go sew my button on. I lift this up and there is a piece of Parmesan cheese from the night before that I didn't see on the counter. I have kind of a marbling type of look on my countertop. The countertops had been cleaned, but apparently that piece of cheese had been missed. It was the only thing on the counter. And what do you know? I shoved this right into it. So there's like this little cheesy, greasy mark. I tried really hard to get it out. No luck. It's not that bad, but I was kind of mad. Anyway, no one's going to know because we're going to be looking at the beautiful stitching on this side, right? Anyway, be careful is my point of my story. And that's real life and it happens. So I only stitched this little design. It was so easy. This little design would be cute for any of the season charts if you're just looking for something to fill the corner because it's only from when you're looking at it from the side that you see that. So I don't feel the need to fill in anything here. If you want to, that's great. You go ahead and do that. For me personally, I know I'm going to be displaying mine like this so I don't want to stitch anything or waste my time. Not waste, I keep saying that. I do not want to spend my time 
stitching this when I can be stitching something else because it'll not be seen. Now, if you're doing a two-sided Biscornu and you'll flip it one way and the other and you, you know, periodically change it, then definitely do so. But for me and for the Biscornu for these, I'm just stitching basically the one side and then the corners. And we're going to talk all about that um, during week three of the cell. So this is my winter Biscornu. I love it. It is so beautiful and I love how it looks on the charcoal fabric. I wanted to do something different to show you that if you switch up your fabric, just how different the design looks. These are all the called for colors just stitched on a dark fabric instead of the flax. So that is a possibility as well. You do not have to stitch on the called for for any of them. Neither one of these were stitched on the called for fabric and I think they're both absolutely beautiful. This one is stitched on the called for fabric and I will be stitching the summer one, but please feel free to do whatever you want to do. So that is my winter Biscornu. And I love it. I think it turned out fantastic. And that is it for FFOs this week. So last week I had a new start. I started the hands-on design tomato tomato. And I said I want to have a tomato project going at all times. And I do because I have a bunch of charts. In fact, I pulled them and put them into a um, portfolio thing together so that I could just kind of, as I finish this one, I can roll into the other one and always have one going. It doesn't mean I'll stitch it on it every week, but I would love to have one going at all times. This is all stitched in Weeks Dye Works, and I did started the tomato last week, and I finished stitching that. So I was almost done last week. Now I had a question. Did you spell this wrong? No, I spelled it exactly the way it is in the chart. I know you can't see it in this, but the chart is tomato, tomato, and it's kind of a play on a fun play on words. And so, no, I didn't, I didn't stitch it wrong. This is the way it's charted. I'm going to make this into my tomato this week because I, I'm really excited. Now, I did buy this finishing kit from Attic Heirlooms, and I'm going to look right here. I will put a link down below. I did go and look, and it is out of stock. I don't know if they'll restock it. You would have to reach out to them to find out, but um, I did finish stitching this, and I'm going to FFO it for next week because I'm excited to make that tomato. How cute. And like I said, I have the finishing kit for it. Let me grab it really quick. I have it all. My tomato projects are going to go in this keeper or this uh, portfolio from Rika House of Stitch and Stash. This is my newest one. I think this was my March one. And I thought it was perfect for that. Here's the finishing kit from Attic Heirloom. So that little strawberry comes in it. The pin, there's pins that come in it. Like you get the whole kit and caboodle. So I, like I said, I did go look. It is out of stock. You may reach out to Attic Heirlooms and ask them if they plan on restocking it. Now you, that being said, you can always finish it yourself and just gather the supplies. All right. So rolling then right into whips or new, new start slash whips. I started the companion piece for this, and this is where I got. So I have stitched the entire top row and the big tomato, that little area not stitched is the little highlight on the tomato. And I started on this little like little rows of tomato and then I'll stitch the tomato and that bottom row. This is going really quick. This is Aztec Red 32 count by Weeks Dye Works 2 over 2. 2 over 2 means stitching over 2 linen threads 
one over one would be stitching over one linen thread or what you would call stitching over Ada. I did receive that question this week. Um, you can always do a search on Google too and it will help explain that a little bit more if you're not familiar with stitching on linen or even weave. Um, if you're an Ada stitcher, you're stitching over one most of the time. I'm sure there's those exceptions to every rule. Um, this is gray 32 count by Weeks Dye Works, and I am going to finish it exactly like this. It's super cute. I want to have an entire tomato display here in my craft room. So this will be my, my first one. And that is, or those are my pieces for the hands-on design tomato tomato. Okay, I had one other stitching new start this week. This is the Sweet Wing Studio, as he said. This was included in Alicia the Fanciful Flamingo's Favorite Things box, the, the last one. This is not available for purchase yet. The uh, charts included in the box are exclusive for a period of time. They will be released later on. I do not have an exact date when this will be released, but when it is, I will definitely let you guys know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did an interview with Alicia, the fanciful flamingo. You can click right here and check out that fun live with Alicia and I last Wednesday evening. She is absolutely a delight. And um, I think the ordering is closed for the most recent box, which is featuring Annie the Proper Stitcher. But then the next box will feature April of Crafty Blue Bonnet Designs. So stay tuned for that. Plus, May 1st, um, Alicia is doing sampler boxes. And those will go on sale, or the first one will go on sale. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know that it's all of them. Anyway, they're capped at 200 each. I believe, if I'm wrong, Alicia, you correct me and I will put a correction up. <laughs> um, but you guys were very excited about that during the chat. So make sure you click um, that link uh, right here and that you visit Alicia's site. You can sign up for her subscription box at any time. And it is a subscription box. It is bi-monthly and it is so much fun. She puts together an amazing box. If you want to check out Floss Tube, I don't know, but I'm putting it right here. I did an unboxing where I unboxed the box that included this. It was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, an amazing box. You get beautiful things. In fact, the pens from that box I put in my spring Viscornu. So you can really just kind of use those things however you want to use them. Um, but it's absolutely amazing. Please check out Alicia's site if you love getting subscription boxes. Oh, the sampler boxes are not subscription. Those are a one-time only purchase. So if you're interested in the sampler, she said she is going to show those. You can get that. It'll be a beautiful boxed kit and I think it's going to be phenomenal. I cannot wait to see what she has for us. Okay, so this was my small start. I did start down here at the bottom. I got the little row of tulips, not the greenery. I was waiting on that, but I actually have it now. I All of the DMC for this did come in the pack. So it's charted in Classic Color Works, but you got all of the DMC. I actually had all but like two colors <laughs> in my stash. So I actually went ahead and just stitched from the Classic Color Works in my stash for this piece. Um, and I did that little row of flowers. I have most of my little lamb and most of the bunny. I just have a little bit left to stitch on both of them. And then I have the cross and the words. I just thought it was so beautiful. And I can't wait to have this for next Easter. So definitely stay tuned when this is available for everyone who didn't get the box. Um, when 
Susan releases it, Susan of Sweet Wing Studio releases it, I will let you guys know. Um, and I know I had a request to have Susan come on. So maybe I can even get, maybe I can sweet talk her into coming on and doing an interview at some point. I think that would be super fun. Okay, we are just going to quickly revisit about the seasonal Biscornu Flossiversary 2024 Sal, celebrating my second year Flossiversary of sharing my cross stitching here on YouTube. That does start this coming Wednesday, April 17th at 7 p.m. Central Time. Click the link right here and make sure you click notify me to be notified when I go live. The replay will be available. Um, I did have a question about that. All of the videos are recorded. Um, once the live is ended, they just live there on YouTube. They will be in a specific playlist for you to watch. Now, that being said, all of my cells have a playlist in this week's newsletter. I am sending out links to all of my previous cells. And that is because I had a wonderful viewer make a comment saying that she was stitching some of the past cells and going back and watching the videos. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Plus I I saw uh, my friend Tabitha, she's stitching the hot cocoa. It's not called hot cocoa. I can't even remember the name of my own cells, but the Shannon Christine chart that we did gosh, was that in 2022, you guys? And I think that was the first backer board that Chantal of 141 Design created for me, for a sal. Um, and so she's stitching that now, which I thought was phenomenal. I love seeing you guys finish. And I was visiting with a friend last week and I said how exciting it was to see so many of you finish more chocolate bunnies this year, which was the Easter, kind of spring Easter that we stitched in 2023, the hands-on design chart. And I saw so many finishes. So that is exciting. You can always go back and rewatch and that content will live on there for you. Um, the Biscorn Hughes display. This coming week, I believe it drops the 15th, Chantelle of 141 Design has a fun new product. If you caught last week's video from her, and I'm going to link it right here she, in her Wednesday shop talk, she is releasing a riser. It's a circular riser. In fact, I am going to put a photo in right here so you guys can see it. It is so cute. You can sit your Biscornu on it and style it however you want. You know, put greenery, other finishes, maybe little vases, little doodads, tchotchkes of all kinds around it, but it's a great, risers are a fantastic way to add depth and dimension to your displays. So she has those new circular displays coming. You can get the little round feet to put on the bottom of it that just kick it up a notch. You can put it on all of your things, on the edge, on the ledge, all of her stuff in her shop. Those little feet are just kind of boost um, the whole design up a little bit. So check that out if you're looking for a fun way to display your Biscornus on a little riser, um, maybe, you know, on tray. You can even put the little risers because they're small enough in little trays. You could put them on shelves in, you know, like in your craft studio or you know, your mantles, whatever. Super exciting. So stay tuned for that. Definitely check out her shop for the round risers. And again, we are starting this week on Wednesday. It is a four week sell. And the fifth week is the finishing tutorial for the Biscornu, which is a long finishing video. It's already been filmed. Um, I filmed it with the first score new I made. Um, it's been filmed. It's been edited. It's ready to go so that when you get to that point, because the assembly will be the same for any score new, um, it'll be a great reference tool. That was That's really my goal of my sales is to have a reference tool where we go from start to finish, no matter how long it takes you. It's going to take me five weeks because I've promised the finish, but you guys work at your own pace. That content will always be there for you. Definitely sign up for my email, email newsletter because I will be 
pushing that out, like I said, every Sunday. And it's going to have some information in it as well, which I think is a little easier to find than in the Facebook group or on social media where those things tend to you know, move up or down or disappear. Or if you aren't into social media, the email will just come to you on Sundays kind of with a overview of what's going on during the sale. Now, I'm not sure if it will be during the sale or right after. I already know what the next sale is. It's a very exciting announcement. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. And that is another reason to be signed up for the email newsletter because you will be uh, one of the first to know about that and be able to have all of that information right at your fingertips. Okay, let's do a little bit of stitchy mail. And I say little, you guys, you guys spoil me. So let me grab that. First up, April Crafty Blue Bonnet Design sent me a lovely little thank you card. She sent me these project information cards. I believe these are from Carrie Tiger Lily. And she sent plenty of these. So some of these I will use for future giveaways and some I will keep for myself. Thank you, April. She also sent a gift certificate to Fat Quarter Shop. And this adorable Ray Dunn Frosty the Snowman mug absolutely darling. Thank you, April. Then my friend Tammy Totten sent me a beautiful Easter card and some awesome variegated floss. Tammy, I'm so glad to know you. You are just an absolute delight. If any of you know Tammy, you know this. My friend Barbara sent me this beautiful card. Absolutely stunning. Uh, this was my congratulations on my floss anniversary card. She sent some candy, which was delicious and is no longer available to show. <laughs> and then she had this custom made. I believe she said her son made it. I know the note is somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Uh, it is a clapper for quilting. You, After you iron the seam, you place this on top and while it's still hot and leave it there till the fabric cools and it helps make your seams nice and flat. It's customized. It is gorgeous and I will treasure this. Barbara, thank you so much. Then I got the most amazing note, which I'm not going to share, this beautiful card and a huge heavy box from Kathy. And I'm going to show you what was in it. It's a giant stack. So there are a few random fabrics. I'm not sure what they are. She sent a few beautiful flosses. These are water lilies by Canon, Karen, pardon me, silk floss. They're gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. But she no longer stitches due to uh, not being able to see very well. And so she wanted to pass on her amazing picture this plus Ada collection to someone who would appreciate it, um, who would maybe share some of it. So this, I did put it in rainbow order. It is a huge stack. <laughs> um, I just, isn't this pretty on camera? I'll just leave that there because it's beautiful, beautiful. It is all picture this plus Ada. You guys, this is all picture this plus Ada. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Kathy, thank you so much. And some of it I am sharing with a couple of Ada, or Ada Stitcher friends who love Picture This Plus Ada. Um, I am keeping a few pieces. I would like to stitch on it. You guys, there's Ada and then there's Ada. <laughs> this is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and then I will be sharing some in upcoming giveaways too. I want to share with you guys as well. So that will be something to look forward to. It won't be right away. Um, I have a couple of friends who are Ada Stitchers and I would love to share with them because I, 
uh, what they they saw it already. I shared pictures and I said, you guys can pick out, you know, some stuff that you want. And I have another friend who's kind of a newer stitcher and I am going to send her a few piece, pieces to bless her. Um, but you can see there is lots here. So I am going to be able to bless a lot of you with some amazing Ada. So Kathy, thank you so much. Let's do some haul. I hardly have anything today, but did get my floss fix. You guys know I'm in the floss fix, the floss frenzy, the fans, no, what's the NPI one called? <laughs> I'm in all of them, but I love it because I have floss. Just like when I was stitching the Sweet Wing Studio, I was able to go to my stash and I had floss. I love it. This is the most beautiful lilac color. I think sometimes purples are hard to find. This is so pretty. Finley Gold is called for in a lot of charts. I feel like Field of Greens and Eve's Leaves are too, and Fallen Leaves. I feel like these are called for in a lot of Brenda Gervais or something. Anyway, delighted. I'm gonna add those to my stash, so that's the floss fix. If you wanna join, I have a link down below. Two other things of haul. This is the Patriotic Parade Shepherd's Bush Kit. It is in stock at Fat Quarter Shop. At least it was when I filmed this. So it's absolutely adorable. I am a sucker for all of these. So I did pick this up. It comes with everything you need to stitch it just like this. And finally, I showed several weeks ago in my market haul that I did get that bag, the sampler bag and pattern. The mesh bag from It's So Emma, I believe, that's where the mesh bags come from. The chart from Shepherd's Bush for stitching on the bag. And then this is the charm that goes on it from Lady.Creates. This was and is, at the time of this video going up, in stock at Fat Quarter Shop. So I picked that up as my last little piece for that. And that is it this week for haul. I did miss this in my stitchy mail, so I'm going to show it now. Um, this is the Signs of Christmas chart from Crazy Annie's Stitchin. Oh my gosh, I love this one so much. This is the Reindeer Sleigh Rides. This is this month's release for the Signs of Christmas year-long series. If you're interested in joining that series, click the link down in the description below. I will have two opportunities to win this in um, an upcoming video, not today, but I will be giving these away. Okay, everyone, that is it for today. I am not going to do giveaways today. Um, I just need to catch up a little bit for the ones I need to ship. And I am announcing the winners from Floss Tube 78. It is in the rolling screen at the end of this video. Um, so look for that. Look to see if you are a winner. I did have to redraw a winner from my Stitch With Me and April and Haley Jackson. Um, I never heard from one of the winners, so I did choose a new winner for that. So look for that at the end screen as well. Um, some things, if it's not in the end screen anymore and it wasn't claimed, it'll just put, be put back into, you know, the, the giveaway pile for a future giveaway, giveaway. We'll have giveaways next week, but I really just want to get caught up on mailing them out and things this week. So that is it. I cannot wait to start the seasonal Biscor New Sal with you guys on Wednesday evening. Um, drop me questions if you have them. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye.
enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.